Hello and welcome to the Mechanics of Poetry. This is season two, episode four. And uh, remember in their second season, we are interviewing poets one-on-one. -on -one. If you wanna catch the group discussions we did in season one, just uh, look for Mechanics of Poetry, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 18. And hopefully we'll have 18 poets ultimately in season two here, we're up to number four. So I'm looking good so far. And today's poet is James Cushing. I'm going to let him say something before we begin. Go ahead, James. Well, thank you very much, Don. Thank you, everybody, for, for, for tuning in in whatever format you're, you're looking at this. Uh, when, um, uh, when Don announced that he was doing a special thing on the mechanics of poetry, it struck me as a, a, a fundamentally interesting concept because most of the time, uh, in, a, in a poetry situation, one simply reads the poem and, and perhaps gives, a, gives an introduction. Uh, sometimes the introduction is, is longer than the poem. Sometimes the introduction is actually more interesting. But, but, um, but um, in, in, um, in this case, it seemed to me that what Don was asking for was not that, but rather something more in depth uh, having to do with, with how this particular um, this particular object in language we, we, we can call it that for right now um, uh, about how this particular object in language came to be invented uh, starting with you know with a with a with a blank page or a blank screen and and your knowledge of the English language the same way everybody else starts uh, what 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 decisions were made uh, what uh, what was included, what was left out, uh, what um, what procedural decisions um, came into came into play, um, uh, and 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 through a, a discussion of this, this 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 can help illuminate ways uh, that the that the poetic mind both the individual example of it and, and in general of the way the poetic mind uh, functions to develop its work in the, um, in the early days of the 21st century. Is that kind of close to the sort of thing you had in mind? We're 21 years in, uh, this century is in full swing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm afraid yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and the and early we, 20th, 1st century, well, I can barely say it now. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, you know, some poets are more loquacious about their poetry than others. Right. And so if they're not, then I tend to offer line by line critique. Okay, great. Yeah, it's like my reaction to your poem. You get my reaction. Good, good. So. Well, and, 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 and since, since, the, um, uh, since the, the, the author of the poem is, only, is responsible for only one aspect of it, uh, and, and, the, yeah. and, the, and the readers are responsible for the other aspects, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that, that makes, it makes perfect sense to have that be happen live and be and be recorded so um exactly. yeah. okay so so um uh um, screen share so, the first so i'm going to hit that screen share button right now yeah and i'm going to uh hit the the ones that, that say pages th 8 30 uh, not, uh 2021 zoom since that was uh what um that was the original date there we go uh and here we go so i am now screen sharing uh, and I am screen sharing the first of the three poems that we'll be discussing. Uh, and this one is entitled For David Trinidad and Tila Garnett. And, and, and um, uh, rather than say anything about the poem now, I just like to read the entire thing and then go back and make some, some comments on how it came to, um, how it came to be. Uh, um, here it is. In Tay Garnett's The Postman Always Rings Twice, Lana Turner first appears in pure white high waist shorts so tight in the crotch that the folds of fabric clearly model her vagina and she simply stands there as John Garfield's ground beef patty sizzles and burns on a grill. Lana first appears in pure white high-waist shorts so tight in the crotch that the moment almost takes wings and flies out of the movie. 
John Garfield lets his ground beef patty sizzle and burn on a grill. This meat is hot. Get it? Her virgin white is an act of camouflage. The moment almost takes wings and flies out of the movie. One thing only can equal that sexual power, the promise of murder. That meat's even hotter. We get that her virgin white's an act of camouflage. From that moment on, we want them to kill her fuddy-duddy husband. One thing only can equal Lana's sexual power, the promise of murder. The husband's as wrong for Lana as the donkey was for Titania. And from his first moment, we want them to kill the old fuddy-duddy. He's a type, rural, simple-minded, oblivious, stingy, and a drunk. Every bit as wrong for Lana as the donkey was for Titania. Their first murder plot involves a bathtub and an electrical appliance. They know his type, rural, simple-minded, oblivious, stingy, and a drunk. So they, and we, figure he'll be easy to bump off. But a cat interferes. Their first murder plot involves a bathtub and an electrical appliance, but a cop and the DA suddenly show up and notice the getaway ladder, so they and we figure this won't be an easy bump off. When a cat interferes, the plot gets more psychological. Their shared guilt beckons to them. When a cop and the DA suddenly show up and notice the getaway ladder, a dark pool of doom opens up around Lana and John, an ocean of lust and hate. The plot gets more psychological. Their shared guilt beckons to them, and they kill the old man because they need a crime to relieve their tension. A dark pool of doom opens up around Lana and John, an ocean of lust and hate they run into near the end of the picture, she in her tight white bathing suit. They kill the old man because they needed a crime to relieve their tension, and their last kiss leads with insolent ease to her violent death at the pole they run into near the end of the picture. She's in her tight white bathing suit. The folds of fabric clearly model her vagina and she simply lies there, their last kiss having led with insolent ease to her violent death near a pole. In Tay Garnett's The Postman Always Rings Twice, starring Lana Turner. Okay. So, I detect I detect a pattern here. Okay. Now, now um, uh, it starts <coughs> with P. It starts with P. Yes, and uh, exactly. And the 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 um, uh, for 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 all those of you who who are um, who who are watching, you know, at a at a at a later date, um, the uh, the magical vocabulary word of the day is. Pantoum, P-A-N-T-O-U-M, which oh, yeah. is a um, uh, a form that that appears to have been invented uh, in Malaysia at some point during or before the 19th century, when a um, uh, when a Frenchman uh, who was visiting the area uh, heard some 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 kids doing it, and 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 it involves. Um, uh, uh, repeating lines, uh, the, the whole the whole line, or only with with, with little variations, uh, uh, so that um, uh, so that this wonderful paradox is created, that uh, that, um, that 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 the poem is going forward, and at the same time is going backward. That that the that the that the poem uh, uh, retreats as it advances. Uh, and 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 the, like every, a car with a faulty transmission, <laughs> right? Yeah, or or or, or uh, uh, the way you encounter an analogy. and people in dreams, in in in, 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 in which the, in which the, like 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 going ahead and repeating and going back are kind of all all yeah, uh, nonlinear, yeah. nonlinear and moved around. Um, uh, I will always be grateful uh, to John Ashbery for for uh, for bringing this form into uh, into English in nineteen. 56 in his first book, Some Trees. There are a couple of wonderful pantoons in it. And, um, uh, and uh, of the poets of my generation, uh, uh, one who has used the pantoon to tremendous uh, advantage is David Trinidad. Uh, and uh, uh, David Trinidad has uh, in his collected book, in his collected poems, Dear Prudence, 
uh, has a wonderful, wonderful poem, uh, a pantoum about the movie, who's a, 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 um, whatever happened to Baby Jane with, 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 uh, with Betty Davis and, and, and Joan Crawford hamming it up. And, and, uh, and, and this, is, this is a marvelously funny, um, you know, it, it manages to be light and heavy at the same time. So, uh, so, uh, so reading this poem uh, made me think of <clears throat> the idea of writing a pantoum about a movie. And, and, and it struck me that the repetition uh, in the pantoum would be fine for that because our experience of movies, uh, particularly in the, in the post VHS, you know, DVD, Blu-ray streaming age, uh, to a large extent is, a, is an experience of repetition. That, uh, that the, the whole reason to, 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 to download a movie or buy it on DVD is so that you can see it again and again. And, and, uh, and, and one doesn't see a movie again and again because one is bored with it. Uh, one sees a movie again and again, or, or because one has forgotten it, one sees a movie again and again for complex emotional, psychological reasons that differ from person to person and therefore have a certain built-in poetic quality, I think. So, so, um, uh, so I thought that that was interesting. Tila Garnett, uh, I actually uh, knew slightly when, uh, from my high school days. She was best friends uh, with, with my high school girlfriend, Mary, uh, and Tila Garnett is the daughter of Tay Garnett. So, so, um, so I, I, I thought at first of calling the poem, The Postman Always Rings Twice, and then on the next line, for David Garnett and Tila Garnett. But then I thought, but, but the title of the movie is right there in the first line of the poem anyway. So, 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 so why, why, why waste space on the page by giving, you know, just by, by repeating the information since there's already enough repetition. So I just, I just thought I would put the, the, the title, I would put those two names uh, the dedication names as the, uh, as the title. Um, uh, okay, now, um, you don't mind if I just keep on saying a few more things about this, do you? Uh, my, my uh, um, I wrote the first four lines and then I, and then I, I remember I wrote the first four lines and then I paused. And I said, okay, um, uh, um, since I would the, think at this point the form starts to dictate uh, the direction. Right? Exactly, the the, the 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 form starts to to um, uh, to dictate the direction. Although, um, uh, although I have a problem with the word dictate because it goes to the idea of a dictator and something that that, that hey, they, forms are yeah forms are pretty authoritative. They 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 do have an authority, but the but but, is your but, challenge to meet that right 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 or, to meet that and the and the and and uh, and and even more than the authority I mean, the, 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 the the authority of it lies in my decision to accept it as authority exactly so so so, uh, so, so it's actually an act of freedom to say okay i will i will i will i will do this and then and then so so i said okay um so the so the rule of the pantoum is that is that line number two of the of the first of the first verse paragraph becomes line number one of the second, uh, and line number four becomes uh, becomes line number three, and then that goes on for the whole poem, and and then you continue it for as long as you want. So like a dance, uh, two, like one, dance. four, three, then, two, that, one. Exactly, exactly, and then and then and then at the very end you bring it home by bringing in the 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 the. Um, uh, the lines from the first verse paragraph that you haven't yet right, repeated. The original two. Yeah, and and they and and they and they come back with this with with this with this strange effect of the of one one hopes. So so um so so I said okay. First appears in pure white high waist shorts so tight in the crotch that, um uh uh I don't think I could begin a sentence with first appears. I think I need to have some sort of subject. So so at that point I gave myself the permission. Uh, to, to do the pantoum somewhat loosely. That is, uh, instead of first appears in pure white, it reads Lana first appears in pure white. And I allowed myself that to, to make slight syntactical changes so that the repetition would still be manifest, but that, but that it would also read as, as, a, as, a, as a conventional English language uh, text. I'm, 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 yeah. 
I'm very uh, attracted to, to poems that tend to read as a as um, uh, as as normal language and as as artificial poetic language at the same time. I I, I like the, the 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 sense of of um, of um, uh, of nature and the artificial of the natural and the artificial, uh, you know, the 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 the, the organic and the man made working in in concert. Um, we live right uh, within walking distance of the Hollywood Reservoir, and 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 uh, and I love to I, we love to walk up to the reservoir, you know, holding hands, and 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 come to the dam and look at this beautiful pastoral you know piece of water and the and the bank and the birds flying and the trees and the, the the lovely peacefulness and then on the hill in huge white letters it says hollywood <laughs> it's it, it's it's like it's like this is this is this is an environment so fully natural that it embraces the artificial and 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 I think that the that the uh, that that um, that, that uh, and, and I hope this poem does something um, does something like that. Um, uh, um, the the um, uh, when I agreed to do it as a pantoum, I, I I more or less allowed the the images of the poem to move me, you know, to 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 to, to you know to to move me through it. Um, uh, I was obligated to use the line John Garfield. Okay, John Field lets his ground beef patty sizzles and sizzle and burn on a grill. Instead of John Garfield's ground beef patty sizzles and burns, I had him let it him let it do it to give him more agency. Uh, and then and then it was thinking about what the next line would be uh, that I realized. And I'd seen the movie, you know, six or seven times. I, I before I realized the pun there having to do with you know, this meat is hot right after seeing, you know, Lana Turner's spectacular body and, and his and, and feeling his desire for her. So so um, uh, so so that was what set that into um, uh, set that into motion. Um, he's cooked. Right. Yes, exactly. And, and, and also that means that he's he's cooked. Right. That 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 that, uh, that he'll be he'll be the one to pay for this for this. Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else, um, I might want to say about, uh, uh, about this. I, I, I tried to make it as accurate to the, to the film as possible so that if you've seen it, you'll be able to follow it. And if, and if you, if you haven't, you'll know enough about it to want to, you know, to, to, um, uh, uh, to want to see it. And, um, uh. Yeah, uh, Don, did, um, or, or um, um, uh, does anybody have any any further you know, questions or statements or queries about this 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 thing about, about the the postman? I found this poem very educational in terms of like you. You know, the plot of the movie. Uh, oh. I think I've seen this movie once many years ago. It really holds up. Oh. It it, uh, it 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 has that. That um, that tragic inevitability, that noir style, that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that uh, nineteen forty nine California thing, um, you know, where the, where the where the landscape is is both familiar to us and alien at the same time. Um, yeah, uh, I was Facebook, partial to Angel Face myself. <laughs> Angel Face is a great movie. Yeah, I uh, rewatched that one many times. Yeah, and and if. Um, uh, and, and what a great idea for someone to do a poem like this uh, about Angel Face with Robert mm -hmm. Mitchum and the and the um, and the and the the, um, the father sitting in his room listening to his Mozart symphony records over and over again instead mm -hmm. of writing. I think we can all we can all connect with uh, we can all connect with that. Um, uh, shall I go on to the next poem? Sure. Okay. Um, this next poem was um, uh, was set into motion by um uh uh by a uh, uh workshop that i uh, attended in new york in 20 i think it was 28 uh yeah in, in um uh 2017 the, 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 yeah um uh um in uh, in hudson new york and one of the instructors 
uh, was uh, uh, was Douglas Kearney, uh, who, who who teaches out at um, at Cal Arts and 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 who is who is a unique genius, uh, and a, and an extremely high energy performer and 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 reader of his own work, and um, and and he, um, uh, he to the to the to the to the class, uh, he uh, he brought in uh, surprisingly. A, uh, a a copy of a Taylor Swift video. Okay, there there are there are uh, there are many different paths to the sublime, uh, and 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 this Taylor Swift video uh, uh, also also involved repetition in an interesting way. That um, that that um, the, the, the video consisted of one essentially of a loop. Uh, of, of Swift go, going out of a door and walking down in front of various shops and crossing a street, but um, uh, but but every time she did it, you know, different things would happen or more things would happen or or uh, uh, instead of a instead of a dog walking by, there would be two dogs, or instead of somebody saying hello, some the person would run away, or um, instead of a, of, a, of a one red car, there would be three blue cars. So, so, so it, it was. It was a combination of um, of, uh, of, uh, of of repetition and forward moment, and it and it had to to do with the idea that you were always bumping back into yourself. That the that, that the that the moment had somehow been been fractured and put back together in a way that various things were were, were looping back. And so, and so he asked. Oh us, yeah, that's almost impossible not to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so, think, so, think, yeah. so, so he asked us to uh, to write um, uh, a. a, a he, he gave us um, ten minutes to write um, an absolutely conventional narrative. Uh, you know, like 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 to say, you know, what happened to us the, you know, the previous day, and then and then and then and then and then you know, kind of loop it and fragment it in a way similar to what the to what the Taylor Swift video was. And and uh, and and the, and the, the 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 exercise which which this is not uh, led to this, um, uh, uh, and 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 I and I and so I was um, I was thinking of of, um, of, uh, of 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 creating a poem that used a narrative that would be continuously referring to the to the future and the past of the narrative in such a way to change the present around. I don't think I'm describing this very well. Um, uh, well, it, it, well, I mean, uh, but, it's starting to get longer than the poem. You're, you're committing your I own sh sin. I sure am. So, yeah. so, uh, so I, I, I will plead guilty, and 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 all I'll say is that um, that if you know the song "Rocket Man" by Elton John, who uh, doesn't? Who and, doesn't? And, and, and who yeah. doesn't? Then, yeah. then, then, if you could have it kind of playing quietly in your head as the poem goes, you'll okay. be, you'll be right there. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's get let's, the visceral experience. Let's, let's do this. Plymouth, England, July 1972. Hitchhiking trip. Sitting on a double bed. BBC radio in the next room playing loud. I'm reading Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. John asks, do you subscribe to Playboy? No. Did you ever? No. I've been hitchhiking through the west of England with my buddy John. We're low on money, but the radio in the next room's plenty loud. It's late July. We're both just 18 years. Friends back in our senior year, 1970-71. Both of us virgins then and now. Local women sense this and avoid us. I sit on the one big bed in our cheap B&B &B and read, Last night I dreamed I went to Manderley again. Radio loud in the next room. We can't even float a conversation with a girl. John and I became pretty good friends last year. We flew to London a month ago and hitchhiked west in a grand tour of England, Wales, Scotland. We've come to Plymouth, a famous but dull seaport town. It took two rides from Bristol. In the pub, no girls would talk with us. Radio loud, late July, Plymouth, England. Ahmed knows a cheap B&B, &B, but our room has only one large bed. We can't even start a conversation with the cute daughter of the B&B &B owner, even though we're both from California, which we were told usually fascinates Brits. Late July, Vietnam grinding on and on with Nixon in the White House. We hitchhiked to Plymouth. 
It took three rides from Bristol, if you count that shitty one that ended after a few blocks. Weird couple driving. I have never actually seen a naked woman. I think a lot about what I've seen in Playboy. A chubby Pakistani man named Ahmed picks us up on the motorway. Americans, are you? The woman glares before we say, just up here will be great, thanks. But Ahmed's friendly. I haven't spent time with John in over a year. No women will flirt with us. Is there something else they sense? That weird couple, like, hated us. Ahmed knows an affordable B&B near downtown Plymouth. His radio's on loud the whole ride. He tells us about a B&B &B he knows, and we walk there after he drops us off downtown. Californians are automatically romantic and fascinating to British people, or so we were assured in LA. We hitchhiked west to get here. Three rides. This B&B &B is cheap. One room left. John and I did not actually speak or exchange any letters this past school year. The room has one double bed. Plymouth is the town Plymouth Rock was named after. Americans understand the material, yes, yes, but what about the spiritual, Ahmed asks us. The radio's on good and loud. July is Plymouth's prime tourist season. We're lucky to get a bed at all. I usually jerk off nightly thinking about girls in Playboy. This presents a problem tonight since our virgin bodies are massively horny and we have never laid down beside another person, male or female, in our lives. Ahmed drives a red Morris. Strong radio signal. We're in England, in Plymouth. The Vietnam War continues. Women won't talk to us. In my nightmares, I'm in bed with a woman and I reach to touch her, but she turns into a creased and stapled piece of shiny paper torn from the middle of a copy of Playboy. John and I sit staring at each other. I have never slept with anyone in my life. I'm holding my copy of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. In an adjacent room, in 1972, a man plays his radio good and loud. Plymouth, England, on a bed, listening. <laughs> Rocket man burning out his fuel up here alone. And I think it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, so 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 th that that's a subtext to all of that. That uh, that that I think it's going to be a long, long time before these guys get any action. Huh. <laughs> so just recalling that line, burning down the streets of. Yep, uh, out here alone. Yep. Yeah. Rocket man. Well, I'll yeah. tell you this. Uh, I do have a few comments on this one. Okay. Uh, Love to hear them. My editor's eye. Okay. Instantly went to the third line. Okay. And uh, it's just a typo. Uh, question mark should go before a quote. No. Nope. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. So that's just a boo boo. Absolutely right. Absolutely it's just right. a boo boo. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's part of my service. Thank you. And Thank then you. Uh, I, I, uh, the part about the radio on loud was kind of in the middle of the poem. Right. Let's see. Where is that line? As I said, on loud. Might be farther up. Not so far down, but oh no, maybe it's farther down. Farther down, I'm sorry. Maybe it's on page two. There you go. Um, there it is, yeah, on loud. The radio's After on loud. Ahmed in the fourth line, you got the fifth line, yep. on loud yep. the whole ride. His, his radio's yep. on loud the whole ride. And I was, I was curious why you said on loud instead of just loud. Um... It's like a setting on the radio, loud. Right. <laughs> loud. Um, um, yeah, this is what I, I, never, I read. These I, are my reactions. I, uh, the, the radio's good and loud. The radio's on good and loud. Um, I, uh, I, I, will, I will, I, that's an excellent question. I will have to think about that. Um, I don't have any strong reason for using the word on there. Yeah. Um, I don't so, have any strong reason to keep it. Might uh, be expendable. Ahmed asks us, the radio's good and loud. July is Plymouth's prime tourist season. The radio's on good. Yeah, that 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 removing that beat there might might make it move more more quickly. Thank you. I will, yeah, I might change the music. I will do that. I will that do that. Fun. Thank you very much. And uh, I I like the fact that uh, if this was a ten minute write, that you went full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is really a poem about several things. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that it, this, these are intertwining. Right. It's it's like it's a poem about Playboy. It's a poem about these young people it's a poem about that family and it's a poem about americans abroad 
Yeah. Traveling. That was what I was looking for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot going on. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a easy to follow narrative. I uh, really enjoyed this poem. And as always, it seems uh, whenever you read a poem that you enjoy, it inspires you to try something mm -hmm. uh, to write. Yeah. Uh, yep. So I made note to myself. I want to, I did the, the movie one. Uh, I did write about Angel Face. I did use it. in. Oh, you did? Oh, I great. Did, yeah, uh -huh. Years ago. And then uh, the idea of a song being the launching pad for a story that doesn't even mention the song. I like right. that a lot. Mm -hmm. I like yeah, that a lot. The, the, the idea that the that the song would, would be simply. Yeah. Um, it's like a time capsule. Another piece of furniture in the room. Yeah. You know? So uh, I'm going to try that. Try it by all means. Only one poem to go. Only one to go, but but uh, this is this is now now um, um, uh, when I uh, when I was teaching um, uh, uh, up at up at the at the at the university in San Luis Obispo, um, uh, I was asked um, uh, more quarters than not uh, uh, to do a class of um, uh, called Great Books One, which is an introduction to ancient literature, and uh, and I always taught the Odyssey. So, so, uh, so I, I, um, uh, I, I, I became very um, aware of the parts of the Odyssey that were, that were, uh, you know, like, that were very rich with names, um, uh, particularly the, the part where, where Odysseus is in Hades and he sees the names of all the great women and all the great, um, all, all, all the great yeah. warriors. So, so, so I thought, okay, um, uh, I, I uh, 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 what would it be like if there were some some sort of you know um, um, like like a, a contemporary American version of that? So so um, uh, so I, I asked myself that question, and this was and this was the answer. Now that's a short intro. Dream of women. In my dream, Memphis Minnie stands near me, her face sore from laughing. Joan Didion, pale in a light green sundress, stands near her, looking anxious but many stifles of giggle anyway. Now Betty Davis and Joan Crawford, wearing their whatever happened to baby Jane makeup and costumes, enter through the kitchen door, arguing as they like to do. And a minute later, Marianne Moore appears in through the same door, her mother standing a few inches behind her. The poet shakes her head and walks away, headed toward, we imagine, the apartment she shares with the elderly lady. Patricia Highsmith comes out from the bathroom where she's been sewing up a rip in the crotch of her pantsuit while having a heart to heart with Elizabeth Bishop about the ups and downs of living in exile, France, Brazil. Who's that napping on the bed? Louise Brooks as I live and breathe. She's tired from a long week and had to rest a moment. She came with Betty Page who's reading a magazine over in the corner guarding Louise's sleep as she likes to say. The phone rings, Billie Holiday lost is asking me for the address. I give it to her. Carla Blay asks, is that Billy? I need to ask her something. And she takes the phone. I notice Virginia Woolf in a corner, listening intently to Rachel Maddow, while Dorothy Parker, seated nearby, looks down at her shoes and smokes. A bell rings several times and the house lights flash. One of our favorites, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, has just arrived with a limo full of friends. Hillary Clinton, Joan Baez, Angela Davis, Janet Malcolm, Yoko Ono, Grace Kelly, Hedy Lamar, Mary Shelley, Gertrude Stein, Myra Hess, Frida Kahlo, Nina Simone, Maxine Waters, Martha Argerich, Sally Ride, Margaret Sanger, Meredith Monk, Carol King, Agnes Martin, Chrissy Hind, Joni Mitchell, Ida Lupino, Simone de Beauvoir, Lauren Bacall, Beyonce, Shirley Chisholm, Exine Cervenka, Wanda Coleman, Jane Freilicher, and Nico. The party is really rocking now. Good thing I live in a big enough place for all these people to mingle, eat, drink, and sway to some good jazz. This dream is turning into a customized version of Desolation Row, what with all these characters. Now look out the window, just outside in the cool air, talking stand Emma Bovary, Anna Karenina, Odette and Albertine, Daisy Fay, Sabina and Teresa, stuttering Mary Lavon, elegant Mrs. Dalloway, clever Rosalind, scheming Lady Macbeth, sexy Circe, long-suffering Penelope. Sappho takes her Martin acoustic guitar out of its case and starts tuning up. 
is it right or wrong to want to live inside this dream as long as I can? Three for three. Well, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, the, 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 the prompt was in, in my head was just to, 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 to do something not unlike what, um, uh, what Odysseus does for the king in, in, uh, in, in book, in, um, uh, what is it, book nine of the Odyssey, where, 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 where he gives the, this, um, uh, this, this, this list of all the great, uh, the great you know, queens and, and, and princesses that he, that he ran into in Hades, and then, and then says, uh, but the night grows long and we're all very tired. And so, uh, and, and, and so, um, uh, so this is both, um, uh, has a kind of classical alliteration, plus I, I hope not in any obvious way. Yeah, this, this poem I enjoyed because it's a way of uh, demonstrating your interests. Right? Well, thank you. you know, Well-versed in movies, literature. So that's very enjoyable. And mm -hmm. of course, because this is a dream, anything is right. possible. It's all possible, yes. So, the, yeah, so, possible. so people who are living and no longer living can, can be, you know, so, so, so the, the, it can be Billy Holiday on the phone wanting to, and Carla Blay, who's still alive, can talk to her. Yeah, like there was only one name I tripped on toward the very end of the list. Okay. Uh, right after Daisy Faye. Is that Sabina? Daisy Faye. Uh, 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 Sabina and Teresa are the two, uh, the two main female characters in Milan Kundera's The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, I have not yeah, revisited and, uh, since the beginning. Yeah, and, uh, um, uh, with, uh, yeah. with Sabina representing the, the free spirit of the artist and Teresa representing the, 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 you know, the, the yes. clinging, needy, emotional person. The visuals are all flooding back now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, and, um, yeah. Mary Lavov is the, um, is the um, uh, psychotic daughter in Philip Roth's um, uh, American Pastoral. Um, so, so uh, yeah, so I, 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 the, the idea is that, is that outside the window, there, there, are, there are fictional characters and that the fictional characters are every bit as, as, uh, as, as real as the, as, the, um, uh, as, the, as the historical characters. And then, and then at the very end, since, um, uh, since Sappho is both, is both real and legendary at the same time, uh, um, you know, with her work in the shattered form that it's in, and, and all the, all the legends about her, uh, I I, uh, I wanted to have her kind of in between the legendary and the real. So, so, um, uh, so uh, uh, the 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 Martin acoustic is you know the brand the, the brand name indicates that it's real, but Sappho indicates it makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, your poems are very enjoyable to read, very entertaining. Thank you, and. Thank you. Uh, I, before we sign off, I definitely want people to know how they can get their hands on James Cushing's poetry. Well, um, uh, I, I, uh, uh, I'm published by, uh, by uh, Los Angeles's Cahuenga Press. In fact, these poems that are in this book, um, uh, with the typographical error that Don showed me corrected, uh, I, I, I Sorry, hope man, sorry. I just... I can't no, help it. I don't even try. No, 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 any, try. Anytime anyone yeah. points out a typographical yeah. error in anything that I've written, that yeah. person has done me a favor. It's really. in the spirit of you, of me wanting you to achieve perfection. Well, yeah, and, and I, and I, I, I th this is why I show that to all kinds of other people, and you know, the, you know, you know, read it backwards and do all the stuff that you do when you're proofreading it. But, but, but you always need another pair of eyes to see it. And thank you for being that. For being so true. Part. So true. Um, uh, uh, these poems are part of my next book, which will be which will be out in uh, in April from Cahuenga Press. Um, uh, the the title the, the book title is Tangled Hologram. Uh, so that'll be out in April. Um, uh, what I would do is I would go to um, either um, either CahuengaPress.com or uh, or JamesCushing.com. Is that is 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 that is that right? I mean, that will be serviceable. Yes, we can yeah, find and, it and, that and, way. Uh, and 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 certainly let me you know um, uh, uh, let me know what you want, and I will certainly try to try to um, uh, try to set that up. Um, uh, let me just make sure that that I have the that I have the right the right address here. Um, uh, uh, okay. Um, that's coingopress.com. Right. Um, 
jamescushing.com. jamescushing.com. Easy to remember. I'm Even yes. Yes. Um, no, no messy blog spot. No <laughs> like messy blog spot. Right, right. I go for the free sites, yeah. Okay, James Cushing. Yeah, you can you can let the screen share go. That's all right. We got to wrap up anyway. Okay, okay. I'll let me. Um... So people can get a good look at you before we say goodbye. All right, all right. Yeah. Get, get that screen share out of here. Oh yeah. Get that screen share out of here. Yeah, there we go. That's not it. At the top, That's at the top of the top. screen should be the. Bop. Top. Bop. There we go. And bop. There we go. Uh, okay. It has sure. Gone away. Sure. Well, it's going to stay there. I, I, can't, guess. I can't find oh, it. Yeah. Here we there go. There should be a, a pull down bop. at the top of the screen. Got it. There you go. Woof. Got okay. It. Got it. I just I, want I, to, I was, to get a I good look at you before we say goodbye. Okay. Well, Don, James thank you so you. much for, for, for inviting me on. It was, it was delightful to share these poems. I love this guy. I love this thank guy. You. James Cushing, man. Thank you. Thank you, Don. My interest um, is so and you're, and you're doing, uh, you're doing a wonderful thing by, by creating this, uh, creating this series. Um, uh, uh, please give my best to Lynn Bronstein, James Everett Jones, and my old uh, UC Santa Cruz uh, uh, a, a partner in crime, Mark Olmstead. Looking forward. Okay. All right. I'm going to cease the recording so okay. we'll be free. Right.